we're standing here with that Saul brother, which is the C-47 that led the D-Day invasion. The D-Day invasion occurred in June 6, 1944. This airplane led a mass formation of 801 C-47s that dropped the 101st and 82nd Airborne Divisions into France in the middle of the night, beginning Operation Overlord and the eventual liberation of France. We bought it and flew it in here and parked it and it was several years ago, I want to say probably 10, 12 years ago. And there's just something about that airplane I thought was kind of special, I didn't know what it was, so I just kind of kept it in the back burner and brought the other ones in in front of it to, to modify and determine DC-3s. And then one day I got a call from the Air Force, they wanted to know if we had a certain serial number airplane on our ramp. And I said, I think we do, I'll go check. So I went out and looked and I saw the serial number and I saw the registration number. So I called them back and said, yeah, that's here. We have it here on our ramp. He said, well, do you know that was a lead plane into Normandy? I said, no, I had no clue. And about six, eight months went by and we had a gentleman stop in that wanted to do a story on the airport. And I said, well, you may want to do a story on That's All Brother or that DC-3 that we had that was a lead plane into Normandy. Basler would have ensured the airplane would have continued flying, but it's something barely resembling the original D-Day veteran aircraft. Um, as history's most significant C-47, that was just not a fate that the CAF could, uh, could allow for this airplane. They came to visit us and we sat down and made a deal with them uh, because they were going to do some really good things with it. They were going to fly it around to air shows, they were going to preserve it, and uh, we thought that was a great home for it. So we launched a Kickstarter campaign in June of 2015 and gave ourselves 30 days to raise the money necessary to save the aircraft. Uh, more than 2,000 contributors donated more than $320,000 to save this aircraft. Taking it back to the point when it left the factory at Douglas to go to, to fly, you know, the Normandy invasion, and so it'll be all back to original. All the equipment inside will be original: the troop seats, the drift meters, all the bulkheads. Uh, we were very, very fortunate that in the midst of the Kickstarter campaign, we received uh, some information that a lot of these parts and equipment were actually stockpiled out in the Mojave Desert. And myself and one other CAF employee flew out there, picked up a Penske rental truck, went out into the Mojave Desert, gathered those parts, and uh, drove them back to Dallas to await uh, their place on this airplane. We try to use all the parts that were on the airplane originally, but when we can't, over the years, we've bought out several inventories of DC-3 parts, and we actually have brand new Douglas surplus parts that were used on the DC-3 when it was built. So we can go back into our inventory, and we can get a brand new 1942 part that will go on that airplane. We expect that the airplane will journey to Normandy, France in 2019, and so we are having to do a lot of work to make sure that it's uh, up to date and compliant with modern standards, while also making sure that none of those alterations are visible to the general public when they visit the airplane. It will appear exactly as it did on D-Day. It is really special, it is really cool, and the guys that are working on it uh, really seem to enjoy it because at the end of the day, their name is going to be on it, and their name is going to be on it for the next 100 years when it flies around and, and uh, people look at it and they can say, yeah, well, I was a part of that. It helped us understand that this airplane was so much more than just the airplane that led the D-Day invasion. Participated in all the major Allied airborne operations in Europe after Overlord.